our webinar today is uh, Equal Pay Day campaigns. Equal Pay has been one of the primary issues in BPW International since our beginning in 1930. Our founder, Dr. Lena Madison Phillips, address it in our earliest uh, proceedings as no country today has gen yet achieved gender equal pay, our work continues. Our first speaker are Krista Krishman and Karim Babul from BPW Europe Working Group on Equal Pay Day campaigns. Krista is a member of BPW Austria. She is uh, the past federation president, and also she is one of our UN representatives in Vienna. She is an economist and international consultant on economic matters. Karim is a BPW France member. She has served as vice president in communication, as well as interim president of the federation. She is a project manager for National Agency for Working Conditions Improvement in France. Secondly, we will hear from Dr. Stephanie Bicker, former press secretary of BPW Germany. Stephanie has a PhD in Culture Studies and a press secretary. She also sp spoke regularly to the media on the issue of equal pay in Germany. Thanks to all our speakers today and our attendees. Dear friends, the floor is yours. Very welcome to this Equal Pay Day presentation. Uh, my name is Christa Kirchmeier. I'm from BPW Austria. To give you a small overview of what we have prepared for you, here is the directory. Uh, welcome from me and Karin Baboulé from BPW France. We want to explain you very shortly what Equal Pay Day is, um, say something about the Equal Pay Day history and the calculation of the Equal Pay Day, which is quite important. Also, we want to give you a very actual overview about Equal Pay Day in all European countries from our actual European report. Uh, then we move over to a bit of European data and the issue of gender pay gap concerning very actual coronavirus. Uh, Karin has prepared some uh, slides for you on that. And last but not least, I want to introduce to you a country action plan how you can start uh, your own equal pay day in your country and stay on and show you some examples how it is done from Austria to France and Spain. So be prepared for uh, some interesting minutes. My name is Krista. I'm the chair of the European Working Group of Equal Pay Day, and I'm doing Equal Pay Day work for over 10 years in Austria now. Karin, some words of you? Yes, my name is Karin Vabul and I am Vice Chair of European Working Group about Equal Pay Day and Vice President of the French Federation and I'm working for the French Labour Ministry in the agency. <laughs> Thank you, Karin. My profession is I'm a business consulting and doing equal pay projects together with companies. Um, so this is a quite interesting team. And uh, probably most of you know the Equal Pay Day, what is behind. It's a global awareness campaign of BPW. Um, equal Pay Day is the symbolic action take for equal pay uh, for women and men. This is quite important because it's a symbolic day and this is what it stands for. Um, it is existing the current gender pay gap in a given country and it is calculated especially for this country. And typically, Equal Pay Day emphasizes the day till that women work unpaid, whereas men get paid. So if you can assume, as an example, men start uh, working on 1st of January, men are paid, women are paid uh, starting 22nd of March, for example, if this is the country Equal Pay Date. 
Um, just to make sure, gender pay gap, because this is also a special vocabulary we use in this uh, presentation. It's what we mean by gender pay gap. It's the difference of the remuneration paid to women and men. It's mostly used for same or equal work, comparable work. Um, we want to state it here as a general term. It can be a result of discrimination, direct discrimination, of course, sectoral segregation, pay structures, the gas ceiling, um, and much more. Uh, back to Equal Pay Day. The Equal Pay Day history is quite long. Um, it's starting in the 1963 in the US with the legal issue uh, Equal Pay Act. And then in 1988, uh, with the very famous Red Cross campaign. Um, it came to Europe in 2008. Germany started uh, the Equal Pay Day campaign and introduced uh, it to Austria and Switzerland on the so-called DACH meeting. And this is where we took over the Equal Pay Day campaign. And from that point, it was spread all over the European DPW countries. The red purse is the symbol for the red figures in the purses of the women. So we work a lot with the red purse, as you can see in the slide up there. And the Equal Pay Day itself stands for a day till women work unpaid compared to men. How to calculate Equal Pay Day? This is quite a critical issue because um, there is a lot uh, said about calculation and um, gaps and it's not easy to differentiate sometimes on that and this is the EPW calculation it's based on the national statistic you take the salary wage gap from the national uh, statistics and uh, take the 365 days and so you can calculate your country equal pay day. Uh, which is quite important to take the national statistics and the 365 is to harmonize um, the day all over the world globally, um, which is partly done so far, but we are working on it. And um, data is quite important because it's the basis for all equal pay day work and it has to be um, very valid. And um, you, in Austria, we can we have it over 11 years right now, and then we can compare it if we always have the same data used. So please take the unadjusted pay gap in your country from your National Statistics Institute. Um, here are some examples. Um, you see the uh, examples up there is concerning Austria. It's in German. So how we stated uh, with together with graphics to make it uh, quite clear and to show how it's working. And the other example is from France. Um, currently we have, uh, this year we have in the European countries, the following equal pay dates. You see it's quite differentiating between the countries. I have to say that the countries sometimes calculated a bit different um, you see Austria, we were on the 25th uh, of February, Poland 7th of March. So it's just a very actual overview from this year's what the European DPW countries um, reported for the European report. Yeah. Um, Karin, so you want regarding, to... Yes, regarding the European data, you have all the information in Eurostat. But in the next slide, uh, you have a brief synthesis. In the next slide, we have, you have a little synthesis of the data in Europe. There is no significant variation over time and across Europe, but we have a, a, a pay gap of 16%. And if we, you decompose this percentage, there is five percent as gap between men and women with different characteristics, mainly due to economic sectors, work time, and it's important to say that education is not a significant reason. 
the other di discomposed part is 11% and it's a gap between men and women with same characteristics. That's to say the unexplained gender pay gap. So the unadjusted gender pay gap in Europe is 16% and the gender pay in pension is 38%. It's very important uh, to, to know this, um, this data. In the next slide, a little focus about coronavirus and gender pay gap. What we learn about uh, this period is that women are at the front line of the COVID-19 and globally 70% of health and social care workers are women and they are paid even less than their male counterparts. And if you have a closer look on all health workforce is 28%. That's a huge difference. And so in the next slide, you have some, some topics about uh, this um, coronavirus period. Uh, job evaluation is a priority in all jobs overexposed to coronavirus and where women are overrepresented. Women are also concerned a lot by severe job losses in women-dominated profession, as flight attendants, tour operators, sales assistants, hotel cleaners, and for migrants, is the situation is even worse. It's important to say that unpaid care work will increase too. So in order to close the gender pay gap in the next slide, we, you, we have to, um, to have a systemic approach. Only one action is not sufficient. So it's very important to have a minimum wages and access to decent work, transparency of job evaluation, mixing industry and branches in the economy, but also facilitating a family-friendly culture in companies, building and extending care facilities, is especially for children under the age of three, but also a very important action is to reforming parental leave and uh, promoting paternal leave, which is a key, a key action. Increasing the value of female-dominated branches, as we said about healthcare work, promoting women and boards and mixity in unions, because if you have no woman in the area of decision, the things can't change. Um, reforming working time and flexibility arrangements to secure the employment by protecting against violence at work and domestic violence. This is a very important action and a new one since the new international convention of the ILO about violence against, uh, against violence at work. Companies now have to consider vi domestic violence. It's a new thing, it's a very ambition thing and company have to protect by um, organi organizational uh, measures. Sanctioning, sanctioning is also a very uh, important uh, thing. But about equal pay, if we focus on equal pay measures, uh, some countries have a legal framework. So in the next slide, you have some examples of a uh, legislative framework. In Iceland, for example, uh, companies have to have job description gender neutral and to reflect the actual value of the job. In United Kingdom, companies have to calculate and publish a gender pay gap as in France, uh, who, uh, companies, where companies have to calculate the gender equality index made up of five criteria, like pay gap in equal and mixed job, salary increase promotion, salary increase to women returning from maternity leave, and number of women among, among its 10 highest salaries. 
it's not sufficient, but it's a beginning. In the next slide, just some tools uh, companies can use because it's very important in companies uh, regarding the framework, we, we, we talk about it, but also uh, during the collective negotiation, it's very important to make uh, analysis, statistical analysis about the difference and professional inequalities and on equal pay gap. So companies have now uh, different kinds of tools in order to make qualitative and quantitative analysis. So in this slide, you can have some links in order to, to, to promote this kind of tools. In the next slide, Krista, <laughs> it's for you. Yeah, this is the perfect head over. Um, the tools for companies, they're emerging a lot of tools right now because uh, equal pay is a hot issue. We are all very afraid that it will um, be some days, leaks, uh, weeks, years later because of the coronavirus and it will not be upfront right now. And we see that in Austria already and we are working on that quite hard to keep it right in the middle of uh, our universe. And this is why we want to give you some uh, ideas for your own Equal Pay Day and your country Equal Pay Day. And uh, please, you can ask us anytime and um, collect uh, about all uh, work that was done all over Europe. So um, we propose start your Equal Pay Day campaign right now and want to show you um, how it uh, was done how we did it on Austria and we had some real challenges. Um, uh, I think it's the budget problem, um, problem. We do not have any budget and we do not get any money from the state in Austria for this issue. Uh, Know-how is also uh, quite important because you have to make sure what kind of data you use and how you argue if you're talking to the, the press and political leaders. Um, and you need to be really sure about that. Uh, there are a lot of chances if you take care and make up equal pay day for your country because you can be the leader and you can drive the issue really uh, in your country. We have seen that in, in the European countries that it worked really well and DPW countries, they started with equal pay day campaigning and political parties, uh, the civil society, they are following now, the press is following this theme. So we really introduced that in Europe. Um, lessons learned, yeah, there, we learned a lot of lessons. I give you some points already. So the point is make sure you use the right data and be consistent on that. Um, and then nothing can stop you and uh, you can start. So uh, some recommendations uh, for your country equal pay day and we really invite every country to work on that. It's uh, worth it anyhow. So start with an action or interest group, find your data and set the date. This is quite important because um, the experience I made uh, in the international equal pay day work is that some countries expect that their data is given or brought and no, you need to find your national data where it is, if you can use it. Um, I know about the problems in Austria because I calculate the equal pay day for Austria. So we, I'm searching for the data in our National Statistic Institute and then we calculate it ourselves. That's quite different to other countries like Germany. They get the date already. So, but you make, need to make sure what is your best source for your reliable data upfront and then go ahead with uh, that. Um, make sure you use the, can use the same data anytime and can use it for comparing uh, the data for the coming years. Um, we, in Austria, I can tell you over the last 11 years, we need to change 
two times we have the same data, but we changed to the median um, calculation, which was quite important. And we did once the change from the working days to the 365 days, which was very important. But anytime it throws through the, the equal pay day quite upfront, they uh, throw it from April into February. And then you need to argue about that quite well because it's not the situation that it's much better. It's a calculation issue. Um, but don't hesitate. It's not that difficult. And you can ask any time and find your group that help you on that. Uh, make an action plan, a project plan for your countries. Make sure what you like and what you can do, what kind of campaigns, events, um, social media you can do, um, how your resources are. Find some key messages that are fine for you and your country. Um, decide on your communication strategy and find partners that support you. Um, uh, then you can have a real very broad campaign. Um, some things for what we did in Austria, we have 11 years right now. Equal pay day is very well known countrywide. We have the situation that the press is calling me to get informed and they also want to know it upfront when it will be, which is quite demanding in Austria because um, I get, uh, I change to the newest data and I get the data around Christmas and then I calculate it and it will be sometimes in February. So uh, long term planning is also not possible here. You have a clue when it might be, but that's a complete different situation we are facing in Austria compared to other European countries. So uh, make your plan, look where you are in your country and what needs to be done. And when uh, BPW um, invented Equal Pay Day in Austria 11 years ago, um, uh, some political parties, they liked it very much. And so they invented a second Equal Pay Day and it uh, led to uh, the issue that we, that we are having two Equal Pay Days in Austria right now. We have the Spring Equal Pay Day. Uh, where BPW is famous for and the other equal pay day is in autumn. So they just calculate the other way around um, and use a little bit slightly different data, but in the end it's the same and we can push this issue twice a year. So, I mean, I'm happy for that. We have a very broad press on that and um, you see what uh, unexpected things can, can happen. Um, What might be interesting to know, um, kind of bad, best practice for Austria, we do our own calculation. We are very independent on that. Uh, as BPW, we are very independent and this is well known. And this is what the, our partners and the press uh, for all this public relations uh, work, they really uh, love that uh, asking us or asking me because of this independency as we are no political party. And I mean, we do not have any money. <laughs> this is the bad part of it, but um, we are very well known and um, for this very uh, special know-how and all the actions we have done over this uh, 10, 11 years, we built uh, our own homepage just for Equal Pay Day two years, uh, three years ago to make all this know-how available. I uh, have to admit it's just in German right now, uh, but we are thinking how we can do this uh, European-wide in English to collect all this um, equal pay day know-how we have here from all the countries. And what we are doing in Austria is that the local clubs, they make uh, a lot of events, very small events from schools into companies. Um, and we also doing some um, uh, countrywide action. Uh, and uh, some years ago, I invented the so-called Equal Pay Day Future Lab, where we're working together with the university and um, all, always work on this Equal Pay Day issue and how we can get better on um, that. Um, so you he see some pictures from this year's uh, Equal Pay Day Future Lab. This is our club, uh, Wien International, very special club. 
um, and we have done this on the technical university uh, together with uh, some uh, main partners from institutions and civil societies this year. Um, some more pictures uh, up front from Austria's Equal Pay Day this year um, to give you a, a little impression. Um, there are some creative people um, together with the Carnival uh, and some other actions more on uh, um, in, in schools and uh, meetings. And what might be also very interesting, we have a kind of spin-off of Equal Pay Day in Austria. Some members, uh, me together with some members of my club, we founded a new initiative called Equal Pay Initiative to get more to the solutions part uh, because Equal Pay Day is very well known and now it gets to be solved. We want to solve the problems, not just talking around it anymore. And this is where we founded a new initiative, which is called Equal Pay, to work on that. So it's quite interesting. And we do have some synergies here together with politics and companies and try to move forward on that. So Karen, your turn. Yes. Uh, so quite quickly, uh, uh, some information about our actions in France this year. Uh, thanks to our partners, it's important to, to, to ask help to some partners uh, when, uh, when you can. Uh, so thanks to the School of Management Audencia, the consulting group KPMG, the insurance group AG2R, the bank Caisse d'Epargne, but also the professional equality ministry, um, we, we, we called, uh, we organized a salary negotiation training sessions in each club in France. And the baseline of the equal pay day uh, was um, equal pay in order to reach the, the sustainable development, development goals in order to have a sustainable development inclusive, an inclusive one. So uh, with the coronavirus, we quite organize uh, in different ways the equal pay day. So uh, our clubs uh, take, took the occasion to, to, um, to, to manage uh, numeric tools. So some clubs as Paris and Lyon organize uh, online and online conferences and training session online. So I think it's uh, yes, it's it's uh, it's a good way to 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 spread to spread the uh, better the information of uh, equal pay and um, some information about uh, we we think that media communication is very important. So. Uh, don't hesitate to communicate in newspapers, in television, uh, with politics. Uh, in the previous one, you can see the labor ministry in France uh, on, the, on the right and on the, the left. Uh, you can see that uh, Guy Ryder, the director of, of ILO, sustained the, the Equal Pay Day campaign. So in order to be more legitimate, uh, it's very important to communicate with politics and with the companies because there is a lot of actors with a, with a lot of topics, with a more uh, means, with more uh, uh, than 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 us uh, in order to communicate. So very important to communicate in media. And also just some, uh, in order to communicate in the, in the next slide, don't hesitate to change each year and choose a topic uh, linked with the actuality. So just some example of, uh, of uh, communication leaflets uh, of the, the previous years uh, in, uh, in France. And don't hesitate to 
to um, use the woman empowerment principles with the companies when you organize an equal pay day event. Don't hesitate to invite companies and uh, to, to, to make us firm the, the woman empowerment principle uh, label. Okay, thank you, Karine, for this insights about in France. I feel just some more pictures about BBW Spain. Um, Spain has also a lot of experience, same as uh, many other European BBW countries, and uh, much more you can find in the uh, European Equal Pay Day um, report. Um, some pictures and nice and we are collecting everything. So if you feel there's something missing, so please um, come and um, let us know. And for this time, I want to say thank you very much. And please, if you have any questions, um, we are available and um, thank you. And Krista, we have an uh, Equal Pay Day Europe, BPW, BPW Europe report. Yes. So yes. we will make we will put the link in the in the slides. Um, yes. In order to show all the great events uh, made by all the countries in uh, BPW Europe. Of course, we do this. Mm. Good idea. Thank you, Karin, and mm. thank you for working together on this issue and join the working group. Yes. <laughs> Don't hesitate to ask us questions. See you soon. So I'm here today to tell you something about the Equal Pay Day campaign in Germany, how it's run. And before I start off, I will tell you something about education and, and then what we're doing online. Um, before I start, I just wanted to say that the Equal Pay Day campaign in Germany has been around for 13 years. It's going into its 14th year. So there has been a lot of momentum already, um, certainly with each year press coverage building up. So the Equal Pay Day in Germany is set as a date for the press to report on. So each year we can build on that. And because we get some state funding as well, we have the possibility to have an office that is staffed all year round and that is accessible all year round to the general public with questions and also um, for press coverage all year round. So that, um, that's just something you should be aware of and I'm running through what we're doing here. First thing would be um, press and communication. There hasn't much change, hasn't been much change around the gender pay gap in Germany. It's been uh, quite stagnant at 21%. So what we're doing each year to make sure we're not reporting the same fact all over again. So pitching to the press each year, it's 21%, it's 21%, we need to do something about it. We came up with the yearly motto. So each year we are um, thinking about what the motto would be. We're thinking of a strong visual and a claim that we can put forward. So to give you an idea, this is the 2020 journal and this is our uh, motto 2020, which was a negotiations. So it's um, of Augenhöhe Fanner, which is something like for a level playing field, we are ready and the visual that we are promoting around the equal pay day and all year round. So, um, for example, this year we had new research in Germany coming up with the fact that um, the myth that women don't ask in negotiation, that they don't care as much about money was uh, false for this new data that came up, that women um, ask for raises, they ask for negotiation, they just don't get them in the end, just stereotyping and said. So when we were here about the motto for um, this year, we came up with this research and decided this would be a good thing to promote. So each year we're trying to come up with something new 
around the gender pay gap, building on all the reasons, stereotyping, etc. And so each year we have something new that we can pitch to the press. Because as you know, press always wants um, something new, some new speakers, experts, researchers. So we're having that yearly motto. And with that motto as well, you can keep the momentum all year round. So even now, after the Equal Pay Day, which has been on March 17th, we're able to pitch to the press as well because we're having the motto and we can pitch about negotiations, pitch a commentary, why it's false that women can't negotiate, etc. So you can build on that. Also to keep that uh, momentum all year round, we have a minimum of three press releases each year. So we have one um, the year prior. So we always announce the motto for the coming March. Um, mostly in March because it's around 20%. Um, the, um, the year before in November, so we always have a big press release and also a conference where we are um, coming up with the visual, the motto, we are, we are telling the public for the first time, this is the date and this is the motto. Then we have a press release for the Equal Pay Day itself. And then we have a press release around April, May, where we are, um, basically telling the new date. So um, the date is set by the Federal Statistical Office because they are uh, calculating the gender pay gap. But we have a different press release saying we as the BPW are responsible for the equal pay day. We set the equal pay day on that date. So this is the third one. Um, and with the three press releases, as I said, you can span attention over the year, which is a good thing. Um, then we have a bi-monthly newsletter that is going out where we um, just report on the campaign, what we're doing, what we have been doing, uh, what has been going on with gender equality in Germany all year round. And um, as I said before, it's been running for 13 years, so we have a press database and we are not only answering to the press, but also actively pitching articles, commentary, online print, radio, where we're, as you can see, in the slide trying to get Uta as the president of BPW as a spokesperson in as much as we um, can with her writing articles, um, speaking on the radio and podcasts and also on TV. And what we have as well is we have two publications, um, just a small one, which is a flyer, which um, goes out at the end of the year for the you have motto and the visual and then we also have a journal which i have here which is uh, a 20 pages publication and um we're doing that so the equal pay day office is doing that bpw is um doing the journal we're getting the articles in, getting the experts in it's um a mixture of um university experts um you know talking about the research talking about the motto but also some more like light-hearted materials for example we have a page um you know introducing some ted talks you can listen to or um, watch with regards to negotiations. So, and the journal, um, due to the funding is free, so you can order that and get it um, sent out to your home and you can read it online. We're using issue for that and also as a downloadable PDF for all your readers on our website. So um, the good thing about the journal is that um, you get speakers in, um, or you get um, new people for your speaker pool in because you're asking experts if they want to write an article so you can foster new alliances with NGOs. So it's quite a good way to push the motto again to ask people to write for the journal. And then you also have a pool of people that wrote about the motto and that can um, act as experts for the press because they not only want um, the president all the time, sometimes they wanna have an expert as well. So it's quite a nice way to have um, a pool of people you can pitch to the press and you also can ask um, to speak at events. In all events, um, I mean, one important thing to get it out street, to get um, flats up and to have the red purses and have it all over Germany because this is also what um, the press likes the most. If they can get out and film a 
at a cinema or film some street action activism on the streets that's what they like uh, bands on the street are actually a big part and the bpw clubs are doing a lot they've been fostering alliances all over germany with local papers cinemas etc and we also have the equal opportunity officers in germany who we try to encourage to raise their flags on the equal pay day which is also a nice um yeah thing where the press can go to and have the mayor or whoever raise the flag so we as the office in berlin are not doing events um, on our own but we have a website where we are sharing ideas and tips what you can do and as i said we have a speaker pool we have a database so we help with um organizing for example um last year we had new legislation in germany um, saying that um, actually you would have to get a written uh, confirmation of everybody um, if you took a photo of them and then put it up online. So a lot of our partners were confused, you know, how are we doing that? Can we still photograph our street protests? But this is also things we're doing that we're trying to um, help with all the questions coming in and, and keep the events running smoothly. And we're also helping with press and communication. So we're having little um, how how to do a press release, how to approach the press. And we're also giving out um, a communication document where we have um, like three to five points, which um, ties in with the motto. So to make sure whenever people approach us as an office, we can tell them, by the way, this is the motto if you speak to the press. This is what you can say, this is the research. So we're giving them as much accessible, you know, uh, bytes of text they can use in their own press releases, etc. And this is not only, I mean, we are, it has been elaborating with the events we're doing that with local cinemas as i said also with businesses that are doing the 21 percent discount so it's not only the normal ngo bpw clubs <laughs> that we are catering to but a whole range of partners that are doing events all over and then we're helping them as well with um designing their flyers posters providing them with text as i said what we're seeing um, more and more is that um, also the partners are doing more whenever you have um, street uh, events on the street, street activism on the streets, it's more and more tied in with online action. So for example, uh, um, a tram going around in Munich with EPW printed on it, a Straßenbahn, and they tie that in with an online action saying, you know, if you see it, take a picture, this is the hashtag, etc. They have um, Würzburg had people, um, cults, um, doing little um, YouTube videos with them this year, you know, how, how are you negotiating privately around care work and stuff. So our partners are doing more, more and more online and we are as well doing more and more online. Um, it's, it's a bit of an hand and egg situation. We try to foster online activism as well, but it's also coming from a lot of um, partners. So what we've been doing is we have such where we have a lot of information already, which is used heavily. And we are also um, called now, for example, this year um, on March 17th on the Equal Pay Day, we had, um, eight um, female run online businesses around menstrual cups and natural cosmetics, etc., that approached us and were like, We want to do you know, a big online action on Instagram. How are we doing that? And then we try to make sure that um, the communication is right. So we help them with their Instagram stories, you know, where do I get the figures from? How do I frame how do I frame it? So we make sure that the facts and figures are correct. And also try to get our visual in, get our motto in to make sure all the action happening on the equal pay day from different partners somehow ties back in with the BPW campaign you can always see a link there and what you see is on our website we have a toolkit for online activism so you see the little um 
pre-done postings there. So we have postings you can simply download for your Facebook feed, for your Twitter feed, just to make sure we get a lot of individuals as well posting on the Equal Pay Day. We have um, templates for Instagram stories. And we also had this year um, where you can see there as well, a profile pic tool for social media. So you can um, change your profile pic and add the little red circle with the date and the hashtag that was used as well. Um, and this year, because of Corona, <laughs> it was actually very good to have all those online tools because we were able to to say even if most of the street events or events at all were not taking place um you can still do something online and um it's really a good thing um to have and you should you should um always think about tying that in with with um online activism we as the equal pay day itself in germany are on facebook twitter and instagram with a um, 10k following adding up to a 10k following and as i said with these um online companies we are also doing social media partnerships where we cross post also with other ngos um, just one last remark before I finish with online is when you decide to do more online, what you always have to keep in mind is that online or social media is never one way street. So the more you grow, the more uh, feedback comes in, the more criticism comes in. So once you start that, you always have to make sure that you can actually stop it because if you have individuals also changing their profile pic or using your post on their Facebook profile, you also want to give feedback, even if it's only a heart or a like. And um, just to make sure when you start something on social media, looking at it, and just, um, yeah, to make sure that it's not a sad profile where, where nobody answers in the commentary. Okay. That's it. <laughs> We want to thank all of our speakers in today's video on Equal Pay Day campaigns. First, we heard from Krista Kirchmar, who chairs the BPW Europe Working Group on EPD. And secondly, with her was Karin Baboul, who is on that working group as well. Thirdly, we heard from Dr. Stephanie Bickert in BPW Germany, who had until recently was their press secretary and spoke quite a lot with the media on EPD. And we heard about the German example, in which case they're a little bit unique because they work directly with the government on this issue. So all in all, we hope that this has been very informative to you, our BPW viewers around the world, and that you feel more prepared to run your own such campaigns. This is an effort, as Dr. Yasmin had mentioned, that BPW has taken on since our founder, Dr. Lena Madison Phillips, put it into the 1930 proceedings of BPW. So unfortunately, no country has quite achieved equal pay to this day. So our work continued. Thank you to all of our viewers for joining us in this video. We hope that you'll also share it with all of your BPW sisters. And we hope that you'll join us for future videos. See you soon.